Now, servanthood. To be a servant, many times people said it's a negative, it's a negative thing. Yes, there's a curse in slavery. But there's something special in being a slave. Because my brother, my sister, at the end of the day, you will be a slave. Finish. But you will be a slave to your own arrogance. You'll be a slave to your pride. You'll be a slave to your your money a slave to your success that your success will be the voice because to be a slave or a servant two words slave and servant two words and when they are together in the right way they're beautiful let's say to be a slave and a servant can be beautiful because in the word slave and in the word servant it has to do with something, someone is controlling you. You have no say in it. You just must do what that person would say. Whatever that person wants, that's what you're going to do. How he sees things, you're supposed to see. What he is saying, so you are saying. What he commands, that you will do. And the moment, the biggest moment of the slave and the servant who gave himself to say nothing of myself but only according to you was Jesus in Gethsemane Jesus in Gethsemane but when you are the slave when you are the servant that means you are laying down your life and it says he was the servant even unto death on the cross and that is seed he became the incorruptible seed. The incorruptible seed, seed is the living word, according to the Bible. The living word is the incorruptible seed. But he was the manifestation of the fullness and the perfection of the word of God. Hello? So there's the servant of all, the servant of heaven, the servant of earth is living in you. And you say that you are crucified with the servant of all. You've died with a servant you've been raised with a servant you are seated in heavenly places with a servant and your life is christ your life is the servant of heaven as long as hell can get you to connect servanthood with slavery then he will win then he can sit back he can chill because you will not have an eternal impact you will not have an impact for christ then he can chill he can eat his popcorn Oh yeah, where's our popcorn? The three people that can give out. You've never been to a church where they hand out you some popcorn. Don't worry, we're not going to look at a movie. <laughs> you know that song, there was an old song 45 years ago. I mean, most of you were just a dream in the heart of the Father at that stage. But... Uh, there was a song, oh, was it Petra or was it uh, White Heart? Who knows Petra or White Heart? At least Petra the Rock that you must build your house on. You know, there was such a band. And they, they had a song, read the book, don't wait for the movie. Let's say, read the book, don't wait for the movie. Because when the movie is there and you didn't read the book, you're in trouble. <laughs> You're in trouble when the fullness of reality is seen. Okay, in that seat. You uh, can go and pop it if you want to. My brother, my sister, the difference between the mustard seed, the seed for the mealies, the seed for the corn, the seed for the popcorn. It looks so nearly the same looks so nearly the same and what you can hear today is, is yeah hearing the word but you just see it as popcorn seed you know so you hear it and it does something to you maybe and it pops everybody said pop oh let's try everybody one two three pop oh there's some guys i don't see them saying that just waiting for the doctor also to say that one two three <laughs> it can be professional to say that you know um <laughs> what i'm saying and that is that could be how you read the word Pop. oh that was nice you ate the popcorn and it's finished 
You had a prayer and boop, and it's finished. And your life, you make this commitment to God and boop, and it's gone. You start to speak to people about Christ and boop, you try it three, four times and it's gone. And so, as long as you stay with that seed, oh man, you can be the joke for the devil. To look at you and just know, I must just heat your circumstances. I must just heat it up. I must just bring some heat to your life. Something that is, some things that you need to face, some intimidation or some, some struggle or some, something where you must make a commitment and you will just pop and it's the end, end of that opportunity. Nothing, no harvest for the kingdom will come from that little bit of a popcorn because you're just going to pop it and then it's gone. Or oh, somewhere the word talks about incorruptible seed, seed that cannot be corrupted. When you take the word as incorruptible seed, and not as some popcorn, ah, it becomes part of you, and it will. Ha there will be a thirty, a sixty, a hundredfold harvest. Now, let's say the seed of a of a prayer according to the word of God, a prayer led by the Spirit with a genuine heart, that you pray for someone, or that you pray for some guy suffering with no food in the township, or and or in the city, or in schools, or. Ukraine or for what is happening in Gaza many people blown up and this and that and that whatever and you you can put some prayers and all oh, the only thing you never mind a missile and that type of thing it just pop, 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 long before that prayer reach Gaza long before that re prayer reach those guys suffering without food long before that it's just pop and it's finished and you have the enjoyment of your personal Luxury prayer for your own popcorn that you want to eat, but no impact. But when you pray the word, hello, when you understand and you have respect for the seed that God is giving you, and you pray it out, they will be with your prayer over that place. A 30, 60, 100 fold harvest. Think of your prayer. Think of that mealy pit that you put in there, and there's a, what do you call it? A mealy strunk. Growing up, and there's two or three of the, you know what I'm saying. And one you're going you're gonna, to you're gonna eat him, but the other one and the other one you're going to keep it as seed. Because next time, now you're going to plant 100 or 200 mealies with that one, that one, everybody say one, with that one stupid millipet. But now you take that 100, 200. Ah, uh, okay, you have a whole bag that you can eat. But there's another bag, and suddenly there's more than 2,000 at least. Third one, 2,000, 2,000 mini plants that you can. And then when you go there, you go into the hundred thousands. What can happen if you understand the context of seed? If God calls his word seed, and you look how seed works, Yes, the guts is, will the seed die? Because unfortunately the seed need to die. Jesus came as the incorruptible seed. For what? To die. And what is the harvest? Billions of people as an inheritance for Jesus Christ. The nations, the inheritance of the Son of God. Are you with me? Because he gave himself as an incorruptible seed. He has a harvest in the billions, not 30, 60, 100 fold. You with me. Now, first of all, how will you serve as a seed? When you give yourself to your flesh, you will harvest the destruction of your life. You give yourself, you take the seed as a word and you take the word of unforgiveness because that person hurt you that person disappointed you that person did this or that or that take the seed of unforgiveness but you will not walk in unforgiveness my brother my sister you will have a harvest of unforgiveness you will struggle to forgive others you will struggle to forgive yourself uh, forgiveness will be a hell of an issue in your life it will become and you will harvest more and more and more of that bitterness till it's seen in your actions, seen in your face, seen in your eyes, seen, heard in your voice. That will happen if you like it or not. Seed will produce after its kind. Clar. Or you'll have to take it out. Take it out. 
Prepare your heart as good ground. Why? Because you believe there is something like incorruptible seed. And you're going to have respect for the seed. You're going to have respect for the seed. If you believe this is incorruptible, if you believe this seed is quality, then you will receive it. Like you received the day when God said, I love you. I've given my son for you so that you will not perish, but have eternal life. You took the seed and you have a harvest, an eternal, eternal, eternal harvest for eternity to come and be surprised at who God is for the next phase of eternity. Hello, incorruptible seed. But now you take that seed of unforgiveness. You take the seed of the fear. People said you will be a hamorse, you will never make something out of your life. There will always be lack. And you took that as a word and you put it in your heart as a seed. You will live the life of fear because you will be a slave. You will be a servant to the fear. And the fear says to you, I must get that job now. The fear says you need to pray for provision. The demon of fear says pray for provision. Because he knows you're going to pray, and in your prayer, you're not going to focus on God. You're going to just order God how he must help you so that you don't fear anymore because he replaced your fear, not with him, replaced your fear with provision. And how, what he must do so that you don't fear anymore. Oh, man, because you received some corruptible word that will corrupt even your prayer. Corrupt your work, corrupt to how the way that you project yourself. Oh, we need to get that seed out, man. Because serve as seed. First of all, you receive the seed. Go with me. You receive the seed. It's been sown in your heart. By a demon of religion, or by a man of God, or somebody led by the Spirit, you receive the seed. Then... With that seed, you become a sower. You will sow the seed, the poisonous seed, if you only receive this poisonous seed. You receive that rubbish story, that, that deception from somebody else when they spoke about that person. You're going to spread it as a sower. Be careful what you receive as seed, because you're going to be a sower if you like it or not. Because when you speak, when you act, when you say, when you give your opinion, you are sowing. You are sowing. You are sowing. So where you come, you sow incorruptible seed, so that when you leave the place, when you leave that company, when you leave that school, when you leave, the, leave that university, there's going to be some harvest for the kingdom there because of the way that you spoke, the way that you acted, what you prayed. When you walked to the class, you prayed in tongues. When you entered the class of physics and whatever, you didn't pray, just God, help me. Well, God, just supernaturally get, help me to get 80% for a subject that I didn't study. <sighs> what about, what about, I'm going to speak over the university, I'm going to speak over the people there. They, Let's say you're in the medical school. Guys, these guys are going to serve you in Jesus' name. They're going to walk with you. They will understand the medical field. They will stand amazed at the wonder of humankind. They will stand amazed. Oh, those guys are going to build. They will know that they must build a place and get the, get the right architectural plans and engineers to, to build according to the word, precept upon precept. They will understand how to be accurate in the spirit. Think of people in whatever field they are and how to connect them from their way of thinking to the kingdom in, with the gospel. Uh, are you with me? This is now when you walk. Just, you just walk, but you're going to have a harvest because you're a sower of chamor sat, of corruptible seed, that what you speak will corrupt the people. It will either corrupt the people or you, they will bring them in the kingdom to honor God. There's not a third thing. You're going to bring corruption or you're going to advance the kingdom. Let's say corruption or kingdom. So don't blame other people for corruption in government. Look at the church. That's supposed to be bring the kingdom principles of authority. So that with that authority of kingdom rule, corruption has no place. Because there's a voice speaking to conscience. If there's no voice speaking to conscience, 
Corruption is the fruit. You cannot deal with corruption. That pe person cannot come out of corruption unless there's a conscience speaking to him. Are you here? And that conscience in the nation comes through the church of Christ. So at the end of the day, corruption is the fruit because of a church not bringing the kingdom rule to the nation. <sighs> because of the type of seed you bring out there. But you want to deal with corruption in your life, in the university, in the schools, with the Ochrista Chamors, rubbish that people teach people. Um, just get the church to shut up. Just get the church not to speak the incorruptible seed. Then, then hell feels safe. Then the demons feel safe at your university or your school or right, in Bloemfontein. Then they feel safe. No challenge from any church. Because they don't know how to speak the incorruptible seed. It will not happen in Jesus' name. It's going to change now in Jesus' name. Through your life, through my life. So first of all, you receive the seed. Secondly, you will be a sower of the seed. And thirdly, he's the sower and he sows you as the seed. That you, through your life, you are so full of rubbish. Or you are so full of Christ. You are so full of anger. So you, you are the seed of anger. You are the seed of revenge. You are the seed of bitterness or negativity. Or you are the seed of Christ. And where you are planted, your life will have 30, 60, 100 for harvest. Just because of who you are. Full of the word or full of rubbish. Get into the word, jump into the word. And you know, when you receive the seed, it's not like, oh, this, this is speaking to me. When you throw the seed in the ground, the ground, the ground is not like, oh, I feel so much better. You know, when the sower is sowing the seed, oh, it's amazing, the impact. You just sow and something is up. No. Oh, there's somebody looking for something. Hallelujah. So what are we saying? Pray more. What are we saying? Give yourself as a seed. That's how Christ gave himself in the Garden of Gethsemane. Say, not my will, your will. Servant. But seed and servant, two sides of one coin. Fight it. You want to be the boss, then you are free. No. The president is supposed to be a servant of the nation. He cannot say what he wants. That guy is not supposed to say anything that he would just want to say. He's supposed to have wisdom. A wise king, a wise ruler understands. He's there to serve the people. His mind, his heart must be for the nation. It must nothing be for himself. Nothing, nothing more than anybody else. A good king. A good ruler is one world that walked with integrity, where that lay down his life for that nation. That is for his people. And if the people not are just kept happy, but if the people are flourishing, is blossoming, is having a quality life, that is what must bring satisfaction to the king or the president. That is a ruler with integrity. And his name is called Jesus Christ. But his kingdom rule must be shown that he's a good king. That he's the best president ever. Who must show it? You and me, ambassador of his kingdom. Amen. All right, there we go. Romans 6. Don't you know that when you offer yourselves to someone, someone to obey him as slaves... You are slaves to the one whom you obey. Whether you are slaves to sin, which leads to death, or to obedience, which leads to righteousness. You will be a slave and you will see death and destruction in your life. So it's not about not being a slave. It's being a slave to your own idea, own opinion, that will lead you into destruction. Or a slave to God's idea and God's opinion that will lead you into eternal, eternal life. 
Are you with me? Which leads to righteousness. What is that righteousness? Obedience that leads you into a place of stature before the throne of God. Righteousness, you have the right to be there through the blood of Christ in how you've grown in Christ. Okay, next one. Slaves. Let me set you free not to be slaves anymore. No, oh, Jesus didn't say that. Slaves, obey your earthly masters with respect and fear. Obey them not only to win their favor when their eye is on you, but as slaves of... Everybody say slaves of Christ. Doing the will of God from your heart. Doing the will of God from your heart. I want to say to you, there's some people, there's a legacy for them. There's some people, they served in, in ways that people would say, you know, nobody's saying thank you. They're just treating you like a floor lab, you know. Are you with me? They are just criticizing you. I'm telling you there's some rulers, some, some leaders, there's more criticism, criticism with those guys and some people that are talking a lot of rubbish about them than many times than the one that is just the waiter. Are you with me? So don't compare yourself in a, in a certain way. Just understand how to be a slave of Christ and not a slave to sin. But slave you will be. You will be bound by something we call that the will, the will, the will, the will, the will of the flesh, the will of your, your flesh, the will of sin, the will of your lust, the will of your temptation, or the will of God, the will of Satan, the will of the spirit of the world. But that, 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 that's that. And you will submit to that will with your will. Everybody say, will, will. Okay, just remember, slave, servant. But there's only one place where you are safe. The will of God. The servant, he cannot do whatever he wants. You know, the servant cannot have his, even his own choice. The servant is just like, shut up, submit, and just do what I tell you. You know, it's, it's only a curse when you cannot do it as if unto the Lord. When you are just muff and murmuring and this and that and that. And like Peter said, you're going to set us free because we are slaves of the Roman Empire. Nobody will kill you. And, and Jesus come and set us free because we are slaves of the Roman Empire. And Jesus said, get behind me, Satan. So you start with how are you going to serve as if unto the Lord, and that you, we call the beauty of humility. And when you do it with humility unto the Lord, He will lift you up into a higher position to be the boss. No rubbish. To be the boss over your flesh, to be the boss over your sin, to be the boss over your own perspective, yes. But to have a quality life with God, where there's some satisfaction really in your life. Not just contentment. Ach, as jylle nog hier. Obey them not to win their favor. That's manipulation. I obey so that certain things God will give me. No? I don't know if you've seen that with children. I've seen that with mine. Uh, just two times in their lives. You know. Daddy, when you, there's extra love and, and uh, adoration in the voice, you know. What, what do you want? You know, ay, ay, ay. Obey them not only to win their favor when their eye is on you, but as slaves of Christ, doing, doing the will of God from your heart. You're going to do the will of somebody and you will be the slave of that person. But the more you do that, the more you will be, your life will be a seed. You are the corruption in that company. You are the corruption in that school. You are the corruption at university. You are the corruption of Bluefontaine. Or you are the incorruptible seed from the kingdom and they will be for heaven the 30, 60, 100 fold harvest. That granny, that granny incorruptible seed and what she prayed for the children and prayed for the grandchildren. That granny of yours that is sitting there and she has nothing. Oh man, she has the gold. 
She has the gold. Next one. For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. For many. That's what we talked about Gethsemane. Jesus saying, in Mark, Jesus saying, I didn't come to be served. I came to serve. Now, that's not totally true. No, he's talking about the one side of the coin. Are you with me? On the one side, he's the master of all. King of kings, Lord of lords. On the other side, he humbled himself into, even un, into death. But in that servanthood, there were no curse. No curse. God made him sin. He didn't sin. He made him sin. If Jesus did the sin, then he himself bowed before sin and hell and all the demons. He didn't bow to sin. He bowed to the Father. And the Father's wrath upon sin was placed on him. Because God is a holy God. Because of his holiness, he bowed before the Father. You don't bow before the rabbis, you bow before God. And what you do, you do as if unto the Lord. Amen. That guy is, is not nice with you. Amen. I had it in, in, in the army. I had it at some workplace. I had it. I don't know why. But a few places where people would just accuse me of certain things. And then the challenge not to justify yourself, but to be led by the Spirit. How to deal with how to deal with that situation where must you speak up where must you be silent but be there to serve be there to serve that lady husband is an alcoholic how will she serve her husband as if unto the Lord and pray for him and not necessarily tell him how wrong he is and how right she is Oh, that's a lot of wisdom, eh? That's a lot of wisdom, man. Okay, we go. Just as you sent me into the world, I also have sent them into the world. John 17, that's where God, Jesus prayed for you. Look at that whole chapter. It's an awesome, awesome, awesome prayer where Jesus prayed for the nations. Jesus prayed for his disciples. And then he said, my father, I not just only pray for the people, oh, let me try, I not only just pray for the people here, I pray for those who will come to believe in you. That's you and me. And Jesus said, as the father sent the son, so the son is sending you. Understand your calling. But the father sent the son to be a servant. The father sent the son to give his life as a seed. By being a servant. And the definition of servant. Whatever your will. That's my command. Father if it's your will. Remove this cup from me. Nevertheless not my will. But your will be done. That's the beauty of a servant in Gethsemane. Be the servant of the Lord. Amen. Let's say I will be the servant of the Lord. By His grace. Amen. Next one. Having been born again, not of, in, not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible, through the word of God, which lives and abides forever. This is for you to write down. 1 Peter 1, verse 2, 3. 1, 2, 3. Everybody say 1, 2, 3. Now you're going to remember that. Okay? 1 Peter 1, verse 23. That's how I remember many verses. One, two, three. When we talk about one, two, three, how you give your life incorruptible seed. Oh, yeah. One Peter, one verse 23. Ach, donkey man. All right, next one. Look eight. The sower went out to sow his seed. And as he sowed the seed of the word, <sighs> the seed is the word of God. And the seed in the good soil, these are the ones who have heard the word in an honest and good heart. Everybody say honest, good heart. Hold it. Hold it fast and bear fruit with perseverance. Okay, my brother. You know the, that whole parable of the seed. Okay, the word is sown. And the first was on the, on the road. And the birds came. So, you can hear the word now. But the seed is falling 
just superficially on this plate. So that as you walk out here, whatever demon, whatever circumstances can steal the word for their satisfaction. For their satisfaction. Because you're not going to make it part of your life. Every time you don't, when you hear the word and you don't take it here, you give whatever other seed is in your life, you give it more authority. You give it more authority. But the more you respect the word of God and take it, the less authority hell and other rubbish can have in your life. Deal with the rubbish by respecting the seed of God more and give it its rightful place. Not just on a plate with a, with a superficial relationship with God and then whatever happens, happens. You've heard the word, but give it two days, you've forgotten everything. No, not anymore. See it with all the rocks because there's bitterness or there's hardened things because... Ah, uh -uh, get it out, man. With all the thorns and the thistles and all the rubbish, chamors, because you have all those other voices, all those other seeds in your life. No, prepare your heart to be good ground. Why? Because you respect the seed, you respect the sower. When somebody you really, really, really respect come to your house, just leave the chamors everywhere, man. The coffee and coffee stain and all the chamors, papers and... Your pizza boxes, we, who's that? I don't know. Leave everything, leave the bathroom in a mess. Oh, welcome, welcome. Oh, we respect your presence. You are so welcome here. They're going to look at you and maybe, and you're going to walk out and say, there's something wrong with those people. There's something really, really wrong. Unfortunately, not in the future anymore, there's some really wrong with many Christians that have no respect. They say, Jesus, come and do. Jesus, come and do. Jesus, come and help. Jesus, come. But we're never going to tidy up the place because we don't have respect for the sower. We don't have respect for his seed. That was in the past. Never again we repent in Jesus' name. Amen? Let's say, I will respect the sower. I will respect the seed. And that is when you, number three, become the sower. You've written it down. I respect the seed that is sown in my life. I respect the sower that is Jesus Christ. And then I become a sower. Let's say I become the sower. That's when you have the word of God, you're excited about it, and you sow the seed. And then in sowing, oh, it's very boring, you know. Because that guy's sowing the seed, like in the olden days. They sow it like this. Or some things you put with a finger in the ground. Oi, oi, oi. Doing that, oh, it's boring. Because I'm just saying the same things, and this is always the same, and that is always the same. And I must do something else. So let's do something fresh. I'm sowing the seed like this, but let's just do something else and just throw the seed like that, or throw it like that, or throw it like this, you know? Let's just do something fresh. Because I need some fresh revelation. Otherwise Christianity become boring. That guy is really freaky. I say, yes, there's freshness in your relationship with God. But with many things in your life, you need to sow, sow, sow it in here. Even if it, you feel it's not touching you at all. That seed touching that ground, it is, was not, there's not like, oh, this reaction. But give it time. Give it water. In the right ground. You'll be shocked at the harvest. You'll be shocked at the harvest through your prayer, through your faith, through your, the word that you declare, through your deeds, through how you serve, in the way that you serve. You'll be shocked either in your, in your, or your children's generation if you did it with the incorruptible seed. Amen. You are still here? Next one. So that you may live a life worthy of the Lord and please Him in every way, bearing fruit in every good work, growing in the knowledge of God. It's not about just obeying Him and doing the good works that God has prepared for you. When you've done it with the incorruptible seed, when you've done it in the right way, they will be fruit. Let's say they will be fruit. Let's say, ni frot fruit ni. <laughs> what is frot in English? rotten no rotten fruit for every worm and hoha 
Ok. The worms must not come and live in you. And the machis and all this stuff. No. All right. Where are we now? Bearing fruit in every good work. So the fruit is if you understand how to walk worthy. Live a life worthy of the Lord. Worthy. If you see it as an honor to give your life as a seed. Amen. You have that scripture. Next one. Jesus replied, Very truly I tell you, everyone who sins is a slave to sin. Now a slave has no permanent place in the family, but a son belongs to it forever. Hello? When you understand how to be a son of God, sonship and slaveship is the same. Because a son serves his father because he's know his, he knows his identity. You don't know your identity. Servanthood will be a curse. Servanthood will be a curse because you serve and you try to get something so that there's enough money at the end of the day. You need a job, otherwise there's no food. Oh, it's very practical, but at the end of the day you start with, you are serving because you're a son of God. You're serving because you're a child of God. You start there. And when you do it like this, your boss is not a nasty boss or a good boss or a boss that you can manipulate or a boss that you must win favor with. Your boss is Jesus Christ himself. And he's an excellent, excellent boss and master. Do it unto the Lord and you will have inheritance. Maybe you will see not a lot of it, but it will be manifesting for your children or their children or their children. It will be there. It will be there. Slave has no permanent place. It's just like that popcorn. You sow the seed and it's gone. Sow the seed, you have your prayer, it's gone. You hear the sermon, it's gone. You, you read the word, it's gone. It's gone, it's gone. But you can remember some bad things that happened. You can remember some stuff that happened in your life. It was not good. And hell will make sure that you remember it. Or you ask Holy Spirit to bring into remembrance how you gave your life to Christ. Certain commitments that you made in worship. And that you focus on that. And you build further on that. That was beautiful between you and God. Amen. Don't let hell come and say, No, you made that decision before the Lord, but you made that decision with the devil. Therefore, what was with God was just fake. No, you stumbled, but the righteous will rise again, rise again, rise again. Amen. Great. Next one. Last one. If anyone speaks, let them. They should do it as one, as this, as the very words of God. If anyone serves, they should do so with the strength God provides. Why? So that in all things God may be praised through Jesus Christ. To Him be the glory and the power forever and ever. Whatever you do, whatever success, whatever you achieve, for God to have the glory, it can only happen if you do it with the strength that God provides. Why will you do it with the strength that God provides? If you lay down your life as a seed, if you lay down your own strength, your own ability, but you choose to be accountable and responsible and dependent on God without God I want to do nothing I want to be dependent on him if you say you are dependent on him then you will be accountable for what is happening in your life you will be responsible Amen. responsibility is not to make your own decisions you are responsible to do nothing from yourself but everything out of a place of hearing his voice and that's why you stand accountable and responsible for God. Because God gave you the capacity. You can hear His voice. Amen. Are you still here? We are finishing off. When you speak, it must be the words of God. When you speak, it must be the words of God. One testimony that we gave 219 times already. Here it comes again. So when I was in the army, a lot of guys gave their lives to Christ. And some guys, they were like, not happy with what is happening because at that stage the guy some guys came with the word of god and when they preached it some other guys demons manifested in their lives and it was chaos in that one bungalow so they called this man that caused everything according to them they called me and the one big guy he took me and put me down there and i was saying god mm, you are aware <laughs> 
And he was swearing at me and going and going and going and going. And he said, you're causing all this trouble and you're causing all that. And at one stage I said, no, it's not me. It's because of you guys do this and sleep around and do that and do that and that, do that. And the man manifested and he nearly punched me in the face. And I was like, Lord. And immediately the Lord said, I didn't tell you to say anything. When somebody speaks, let it be like the oracles of God, the words of God. Are you with me? And they could, maybe he punched me and I would go out there. You know, I had to suffer for the gospel. No, I had to suffer for my stupidity. Because I was not dependent on God. And then you, they went on and at one stage they start to mock God and swear at Christ. And as they were starting to mock Christ and swear at Christ, I just felt in my heart, it's time to speak. That Holy Spirit says it's time to speak. And I spoke and I said, you know, you're such a lot of fools. You know, because if you die tonight, you're all going to burn in hell. And they were like, whoa, I thought he's the Germany with the nice words. You know, and so, hallelujah. And so what, is, what happened? It was just this, everybody was shocked. I'm saying, you're, you're such a lot of fools. You're such a lot of stupid fools, I said. They were like, and I was also in my heart thinking, Lord, what am I saying? <laughs> Such a lot of stupid fools. You know, why? Because God does not want you to go to hell. He has a desire for you to be with him. He has a desire. But you are so arrogantly a lot of stupid fools that you say, no, we rather want to go and burn in hell. And it was just suddenly quiet, where everybody was screaming, laughing, mocking Christ, swearing at Christ, even at that moment. It was like this demonic moment. And in that silence, I just said, God, see, I want to tell you, you are so precious to Him. You are so precious to Christ. And we sat there, and this 15 minutes of interrogation become like three hours of they asking me questions and this guy that just told me the whole time I'm gonna hum you up and I'm gonna hum and I'm gonna hum you and I'm gonna hum you next moment he was the one asking the questions <sighs> so 12 o'clock 1 o'clock went back to my bungalow 4 o'clock is inspection so it's like two hours and then cleaning up everything and boots and whatever and for four o'clock inspection that evening no that bungalow is calling Dormany again and I was like there's no way and some other guys that gave their lives to Christ already they said no 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 we will help you with the boots and the this and the this please go please go I went there and there here's this big guy again that grabbed me and came to me and said Dormany Dormany I want you I, I organized this room for you um, there's 13 of us we want to give our lives to Christ and I'm going to send them in one by one. And lastly, I'm also going to come. I also want to give my life to Christ. He organized the whole crusade, everything. <laughs> this man that wanted to beat me up with the most intense words the previous night. When you speak, let it be what God wants to say, but at the right time. And so that when you serve, like the next night, Holy Spirit can work. I prayed for these guys. Some of them manifested some demons out there that I got a fright. But all of them gave their lives to Christ. But it was just, it was just God. My brother and my sister, there's such a lot of opportunities for you. May God want to throw you as a seed into that place. As a seed. But then you need to respect the seed. Get it in your life. You need to respect the sower. You need to see the honor that you have to sow the seed so that at the end of the day you can be in the hand of a God, become the seed to be sowed into the nations that through your life 30, 60, 100 fold harvest. Because what you build will be burned away when you go to heaven. So if you build correctly, God, you're going to take some house with you to heaven. No rubbish. When you build correctly, People will come to you in heaven. You know, you prayed for us in Ukraine. That's what they saw then in heaven. You prayed for us. In you, you prayed for us in Gaza. You prayed for us. And this is what happened. 
And that what has eternal value, your life, your prayer had eternal value. What you spoke had eternal value. What you, what the words that you, of God that you believed had eternal value. And people will come to you, and it's not like you will get the praise. No, God will, got the, will get the praise all over. But you will know those opportunities. You did it with God. You did it with God. You did it with God. You went with God. And you have all these experiences with that person. Is it not the greatest memories of what you did beautifully with somebody in your life? Maybe you and a father, you and a friend, you and a mother, you and your wife or your husband, you and someone, and that it was this awesome experience that you had together. That's part of your reward in heaven. Are you with me? That's what you will know for eternity. It had eternal value. And many times you, people will come to you and not thank you and bow before you, but that you together have an excitement to give God the honor for what he has done. Amen. I challenge you for such a lifestyle to be the seed. God, come and help us. Forgive us, Lord, for just many times receiving the seed in a, in a shallow, fake heart, Lord, so that the enemy can just use it as food. Forgive us, Lord, for hearts troubled with a lot of stuff. Help us to get those hard stones out of our hearts. God, forgive us for allowing other seeds of rubbish in our lives through bitterness and temptations and fears and whatever, Lord. Forgive us for that, my God. But God, help us to position our hearts as good ground as we choose to respect the seed, the word of God, and as we choose to respect the sower, you, Jesus Christ, through your spirit. I thank you that you come and do that in our lives and through our lives, please, Lord. Teach us in such a way how to lay down our lives in servanthood as a privilege and not servanthood as a curse. So that through servanthood we will be slaves of you and you alone to do your will. God, so that through our lives there will be a 30, 60, 100 fold harvest for your kingdom. Not a harvest for destruction. Not a harvest for corruption for our children. No, God, we don't want for our children a harvest of corruption and destruction. We want a harvest for your kingdom. With your hand over everyone around us and our children and their children. We trust you for that, Holy Spirit. That you come and do that for every man, every woman. As right now, right now we choose to take out that corrupt corruptible seed that can bring destruction. Holy Spirit, help every man and woman to go and sit with you for them to see and to hear from you where in their lives that they take corruptible seed into their hearts that can destroy their future so that they can deal with that in forgiveness and that they will see a beautiful future with you. In Jesus' name we pray and all say, Amen, Amen, let it be so.